Brakata Yahweh, Brakata Yahweh Shai, Brakata Yahweh, Brakata Yahweh Shai, Koholo Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Kakadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, Shalom Labo Quarium, Yahweh is the name of that Heavenly Father, which is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Bashim, which means in the name of Yahweh Shai is named the only begotten Son who was sent to deliver the children of Israel from their sins. Bashim Kakadash means in the name of the Holy Spirit, which is the volume of the book. Spirit of truth, Shalom Labo Quarium, peace to the elect. That's the men, women, and children who were slated to be delivered in these last days. All right, and um, the name of the year I'll start off and talk about as Apostle Tahar coined the year of the hastening of Yahweh Bashim Shai, the return of Yahweh Bashim Shai. You know, and uh, the word haste, as we know, is to make you know to get done quickly or rapidly or make things happen. And the purpose of this video is to show that the time that we're living in is extremely short. And in the hastening, we have to also make haste ourselves. You know, um, it's not, it's, we're, not time, we're not in the time of uh, being slew-footed or dragging our feet to do particular things. You know, we see, we're seeing these things, you know, as the scriptures tell, tell you. Uh, seeing, seeing that all these things come to, shall come to pass, what man of man ought you to be? All holy conversation and godliness, all right, because and what's the holy conversation? You know the conduct in which we're supposed to be in, as far as doing the videos. You know, uh, uh, forsaking not the assembly of the brethren, as the scriptures tell you. You know, uh, being in the mix, getting in the loop. You know, I want to say that as well. You know, uh, you don't want to be in the, in the mind frame where you're just always told what to do. You know, uh, once upon a time, you know. A lot of there was a lot of there was a, a portion of time where a lot of brothers weren't making videos at all, but it took Apostle Tahar, you know, to uh, light a fire under uh, us brothers, to, you know, uh, really kick it up, you know. But we're living in a time where it's almost to the point where we don't, you know, we shouldn't be have to be told what to do, you know, whether it's filling in, you know, for another brother in this particular situation with the camp. You know, or uh, knowing that you need to do your videos or knowing whatever you're supposed to do, you know, you should know you should make haste in it. OK, because as you can see before you, these legislations are being brought to uh, brought to pass extremely fast. Here it is. Uh, Joe Biden was just sworn in at the inauguration. All right. What was that? About 12 o'clock, 1231 o'clock. Right now it's 521 Eastern time, which I'm in the DMV. D.C., Maryland, Virginia area, all right? So that was about, let's say, three hours ago, three, four hours ago. And just two hours ago, okay, Biden's to reverse transgender military ban imminently, White House says, okay? So and then you also, it was already noted yesterday that Biden selects transgender Dr. Rachel Levine as assistant health secretary. So we see the angle in the uh, agenda of this new administration. And when we look at the Bible, it tells you that uh, Sodom and Gomorrah was set as forth as an example for other nations and what they're not supposed to be. So we know that the judgment is coming <laughs> extremely fast, man. All right. So that's why we're supposed to hasten these times. All right. Let, let, let me get that scripture first. All right. This is the book of Second Ezra, chapter 14 and 14. No, let me start at 13. Now, therefore, set thine house in order, right? And what does it mean to set your house in order? Meaning to get your mind right and reprove thy people, comfort such of them as be in trouble and renounce corruption, you see? And that's the job of the lot and the prop, the, the job and lot of the prophet, the portion of the prophet, right? It says, let go from thee mortal thoughts, cast away the burdens of man, put off the weak nature, all right? Because we're supposed to be uh, fully set charged up to, to do the work of the Lord, seeing these things to come to pass, right? It says, and set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee and haste thee to flee from these times. You see? So we, we're supposed to be in a hasty mind frame right now, man. All right? This is not the time to say, well, you know, we do it later or, you know, I'll get to that when I get to it or whatever the circumstance is, man. You know, when Satan is doing his thing to hinder the growth of the brethren, the growth of the ministry, the growth of the word of the Lord, all right? So we have to make haste to 
You know, because as Apostle Gabor used to always say, man, Satan don't take no coffee breaks, man. Satan don't, don't Satan don't got to go to sleep. All right. Satan don't got to go to work tomorrow, if you will. You know, Satan is on demon time, <laughs> as Jake says nowadays, man. So he's he's fully set doing his job. And you like I said, the administration has set forth is being fully charged right now, man. You know. If any time, you know, I remember when Trump came into office, I made a video about, you know, Trump's in office, you know, let's go. Like, you know, you know, it's, it's time to make a move. But now more than ever, man, you know, now more than ever, are we supposed to put our hands to the plow, that to get our hands dirty in this thing, so to speak. OK. It says verse 16, for yet greater evils than those which thou see has seen happen shall be done hereafter, man. All right, because when you're dealing with hastening, the reason why people uh, make haste is because typically there's judgment about to be set forth. Right. Let me get this scripture real quick. This is. Uh, Jeremiah chapter one, and I'm going to start at verse 10. It says, see, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms. This is the most high for laying the message to. All right. Uh, Jeremiah, the prophet, it says. I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Moreover, the word of Yahweh by Shimei Shai came unto me saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Right. So when I read this, OK, I was wondering why. OK, why, why did it say that he saw an almond tree? OK, now. What it led me to, which we'll do this here, you know, I just put the word almond tree and I put Bible in and this article came up, all right? And uh, what it shows forth, it says that, it says here, it says, uh, I'll start here, this portion, and see if I light it up. Yep, right here, if you're following along. Uh, for the prophet Jeremiah, the almond tree symbolized moving forward and getting things done speedily. You see, the word of the Lord came to me. What do you see, Jeremiah? I replied, I see a branch of an olive tree. The Lord said to me, you have seen right, for I am watchful to bring my word to pass. Right? Which uh, it says here, uh, number 17, 22 and 23 reports that Moses... Uh, deposited the staff before the Lord in the tent of the pack. The next day, Moses entered into the tent of the pack, and there the staff of Aaron and the house of Levi had sprouted. It was brought forth sprouts, proceeded blossoms, uh, and born almonds, which I'm going to go into that to that uh, scenario, to that account. But what I want to get right here is, is the botanic description. Okay, what does it mean, the, the botanic description? Meaning, you know, what does the olive tree, I'm sorry, the almond tree uh, represent? All right. And from a botanical standpoint, it says a deciduous tree. Let's look up that word deciduous real quick. It says shedding its leaves annually. Right. It says what? Because you have perennials, which are trees or uh, shrubs that have tree uh, uh, leaves all year round. You know, it says the almond tree has a special place in it says in, in Israelis, meaning Israelites hearts as it blossoms gloriously before its leaves sprout in the winter. You see from January to March, almond blossoms, almond blossom is the harbinger of the approaching springtime. And in is in his Israelite culture and folklore, the almond tree is the symbol of spring, a renewal of hope. And we understand when you go to 2 Nebuchadnezzar 6 and 9, it says Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So if you understand the scriptures, in fact, you know, it's funny, uh, Biden, he actually quoted the scripture. He said before, uh, uh, before, oh, it's easy. Uh, I think what he was quoting was the, was the night is far spent. Yeah, he quoted this, this scripture, which is spiritual still because we understand we understand what that truly means. He said, because we're going to rejoice in the daytime. Let me see. Let 
Okay, this is a little, this is different. This is not what he quoted, but this is still good. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Why? Because the night represents the darkness. Okay, it represents uh, bad times. Because that's what's coming. All right, when you go into Jeremiah, the first chapter, which I'm going to finish up. It says, let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. And that's what we're doing with this word. Okay, so let's go back to uh, Jeremiah, the first chapter. Right. It says, moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Then said Yahweh unto me, thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. You see, because the olive tree represents a, a blossoming. All right. Springtime, the good to come. You see, it says in the word of Yahweh came unto me the second time, saying, what seest thou? And I said, I see a seething pot. And what's a seething pot? Meaning a boiling pot. All right. Scriptures tell you that America is going to become the lake of fire, man. Okay. Just like Sodom and Gomorrah. It says what? And the face thereof is toward the north. The Lord, Yahweh, Bashim Yahshua said unto me, out of the north an evil shall break forth upon all the inhabitants of the land. For lo, I will call all the families of the kingdoms of the north, saith Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, and they shall come and they shall set everyone in his throne at the entering of the gates of Jerusalem. Now, who's Jerusalem? Y Yerushalayim, okay, which means the city of peace, in which the word city goes back to the word citizen, which means the people, the people of peace, and against all the walls thereof round about, and against all the cities of Judah. And I will utter my judgments against them, touching all their wickedness, because a lot of our people, all right, they put forth their hand with the wicked, men. All right, the scriptures tell you that their tables are full of vomit, meaning what? The things that they take, uh, uh, the thing, the, their uh, pleasant things, you know, the, uh, their sacrifices are uh, abominable, man. As you see the works of the new administration, okay? It says what? Who have forsaken me and have burned an incense unto other gods and worship the works of their own hands. You see? And that's what's going on. Today was that ritual that took place, the inauguration. Our people were rejoicing and celebrating uh, different gods. You had the uh, the one Jake pastor that came up there from, from uh, Delaware. And then you had the, uh, the one uh, uh, Jake girl. You know, little Judite girl that she was saying her little speech and everything. And our people rejoicing in this, man. And the Heavenly Father is showing you that he's not satisfied with our people indulging into these customs. Okay? So, hey, that's the point on that. Now, what I want to do is I want to go to uh, Numbers 17th chapter. And when you understand this, so you only, you, you had a... Uh, the rulers of Israel, they were they were basically doing their own thing, all right? And uh, they weren't following the word of the Lord. So what the Most High told Moses to do was to get all the 12 rods and, and Aaron's rod. And he said, whoever's rod would blossom, all right? That's the, the rod he would deal with. But look what he says, though. Look, let me get this. I don't think I highlighted Salakia. Um, here we go. Verse 7. And Moses laid up the rods before Yahweh by Shem Yahushai in the tabernacle of witness. And it came to pass that on the morrow, meaning the next day, Moses went into the tabernacle of witnesses. And behold, the rod of Aaron of the house of Levi was budded and brought forth buds and bloom blossoms and yielded almonds. You see, going back what to that uh, concept of hastening and of a new beginning. Right. But check it out. It says, and Moses brought all the rods before them. I'm sorry, from before Yahweh unto all the children of Israel. And they looked and took every man his rod. And Yahweh said unto Moses, bring Aaron's rod again before the testimony to be kept for a token against the rebels. You see, and thou shalt uh, quite take away their murmurings from me that they die not. You see, so the most high had mercy on those uh, uh, different rulers, man. Okay, it says, and Moses did so as Yahweh commanded him, so did he. And the children of Israel spake unto Moses, saying, Behold, we die, we perish, we all perish. Whosoever cometh anything near unto the tabernacle of the Lord shall die. Shall we be 
uh, consumed with dying. And as you've seen, the Most High told him that he would spare him. But it showed forth that the budding of Aaron's rod, which is all spiritual now, okay, the uh, the almond, okay, the yielding of the almond, right, which is which is what of a new beginning, okay, and also too, okay, uh, well yeah, that's pretty much it, you know, that that that's the point, man, okay, so we're living in that time of of of, of a very dark hour. Okay, so we need to be um, more hasteful, if you will, all right, in these times, in these days. Why? Because we see the new day approaching, you, okay? But before that new day, it's going to get very hellish out here, man, all right? Read uh, Wisdom of Solomon, the 17th chapter and the 18th chapter, okay? You see what happened during the time of Moses, Okay, and the children of Israel while they went in captivity and those different plagues that came and especially that last plague of death. And you've seen the apparitions and you've seen, you know, the, uh, the frightfulness and the fears and, and the darkness. That's what's coming to here in America, man. When you look at the different countries around the world, you already see the uprisings. All right. When you watch uh, uh, global news, uh, uh, I like to watch Al Jazeera. Uh, you, they showed over there in um Mainly in uh, Africa, Uganda, uprisings, all right, uh, Tunisia, all right, uh, massive uprisings, all right, you have uh, uh, Central Africa, all right, uh, uh, Bosnia, uh, different, uh, uh, plenty of places throughout the world where, the, you know, it's very dark right now. Oh, Brazil, oh, you see that situation, uh, Honduras, all right, the, uh, the people in the caravan of Honduras coming up to Guatemala, you see? So it's many things are happening, but it's happening fast. So what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to act fast. Why? Because we know the times. All right. And I'm going to close on that. Call Lord Yahweh. Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. Ba'ashim Kakwadash. Hey, Shalom. There's another one. Biden to deploy FEMA National Guard as part of national vaccination plan. You see, these, these Edomites ain't playing, man. So we need to get on a good foot too. Shalom.